Hi everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing All the Murmuring Bones by A.G. Slatter, which I received as a digital advanced reader copy from NetGalley and the publisher in exchange for an honest review. I requested this title because I was kind of in a fairy tale mood and this was billed as a dark fairy tale. The authors that the publicity was comparing it to were Catherine Arden and Naomi Novik, both of whom I really like. It's kind of funny though, because even reading that, I realized that the Naomi Novik titles that are being referenced are Uprooted and Spinning Silver, which are her two fairy tale books, and those are the two books by Naomi Novik I have not read. I've read her Temerary series and uh, A Deadly Education, which is her new series. But I really like Catherine Arden. Also, realistically, guys, I realized that comp titles or comp authors like that really just say more about what the publisher thinks the book might be like, or rather who they are marketing the book towards, not necessarily that the book is going to be all that similar. So we all know not to take those comparisons very seriously, but even so, when I was reading this, I actually did some thinking about why The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden worked so much better for me than this book did. As you guys can probably guess, I wasn't a huge fan of this book. It was one of those books that just kind of left me neutral. I thought that the writing was quite evocative, but I just, I didn't really connect to it in any way. It was pretty short. Um, it did some things well, but overall I was just left, you know, a little bit unmoved by this book. Just to give you an idea of what it's about, All the Murmuring Bones is set in an Irish sort of dark fairy tale setting. It feels kind of historical. I didn't realize right away, but it's a secondary world, it's not our world, which I'll talk about a little more later. So basically it has a very gothic vibe. There is a creepy old mansion up by the sea where this family, the O'Malley's, has lived for generations. They used to be really powerful and wealthy and now the family has kind of died out and the mansion has fallen into disrepair and it's just a grandmother and her granddaughter who are left uh, with the granddaughter being raised by her grandparents. So now at the beginning of the book, the grandmother is counting on our protagonist, Mirren, to restore the glory of the family by maybe making some not so great sacrifices. And sacrifice is overall a theme in this book where people are sacrificing for this family, where um, one child in each generation is being sacrificed to the sea, basically. It's not super clear at the beginning what this means, but it's part of the family legend. And there's definitely a feeling that something supernatural and not so great has been going on in this family for generations. So basically, yeah, very gothic. So like I said, I didn't realize at first that this was supposed to be a secondary world setting, that it wasn't set in our world. Uh, it was just kind of unclear at first because it did feel so Irish in terms of the, the names and sort of the feeling of the place, but then there were no actual places mentioned as far as I could tell. There was magic and stuff like that mentioned, but you can have, you know, fantasy set in our world where there's magic. So. It turns out that this is set in the same world that the author has written other short stories and another forthcoming novel that will be set in this world, but I didn't really realize that at first. It was kind of like halfway through the story. It's not a big deal, but I just kind of realized, oh, I don't think this is supposed to be our world. This is somewhere else. But it still had mythical creatures that correspond to Irish mythology and things in our world. So I don't I don't quite understand the setting, to be honest. Maybe if I had read some of her short stories or other works by the author, maybe I would have understood what was going on there a little bit. I think that had this been a truly historical novel, it would have worked a lot better for me. What I did like about All the Murmuring Bones was the sense of place and the dark fairy tale vibe. Those were really good. The writing was very evocative. It really did hit a mood. It did kind of hit that mood and stay there for the entire book. And to me, I do think of the, the gothic novel as being kind of intensifying creepiness, but this kind of started started in a creepy mansion, we went some other creepy places and ended somewhere creepy too. But it was a nice dark vibe. It was, it was the right amount of creepy for me where it was dark and disturbing and I felt like a little bit creeped out, but it, it wasn't so disturbing. Like for example, Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia is a book that I overall really liked, except it got so horrifying and there was so much body horror and gross stuff by the end that I just couldn't handle it because I don't do well with that stuff. This is a book that stayed on the right side of dark and horrific for me. It didn't get into body horror. It didn't get into anything so gross that I just, because I, I have a weak stomach, what can I say? There was also a part of the story where the main character is on a journey, and I really liked that, probably the best part of any section in the book, because I liked getting to see more of the landscape of this world. She encounters different 
um, supernatural elements and mythical creatures and things like that. And I just, I liked that sense of place, that sense of wonder and also dark creepiness. It reminded me of a book, I can't remember the name of the author now, but it was called The Hounds of the Morrigan. I think it's a, a young adult or middle grade novel that I read when I was pretty young, but it's a similar thing where you're, you're encountering all these sort of mythological figures and creatures. And this wasn't a huge element of this book, but it was probably my favorite section. I also think that all the murmuring bones did have some good twists and reveals. They didn't have a ton of impact because I wasn't incredibly invested in the story, but even so, it definitely wasn't one of those books where I just knew everything that was going to happen from the beginning. I, I like books where I feel like I don't know where it's going, and I did get that here. The problem is that it felt almost like it was two stories in one, and they kind of connected, but kind of not. And yeah, so there were some, some structure issues there, but just in terms of the, the twists, the reveals, I think if I had been more invested in the character and the story, I would have really liked those. So what didn't really work for me so well in this book, I didn't really care about our main character very much at all. Her personality wasn't very strong. She just felt like kind of a conduit for the story. I she had, you know, some character moments, but I didn't really have a strong sense of who she was. Some of the other characters were a little bit too dimensionally nasty, but also as a fairy tale story, I expect to have a certain amount of wicked characters getting in our hero's way. So that didn't really bother me so much. I just wasn't able to really get invested in this story somehow. I feel like my biggest issue with this book is that I felt like the writing didn't quite promise anything and then didn't really actually deliver anything either. That's kind of where I'm identifying my lack of investment. I don't mind stories that are mostly about vibe, um, that are just kind of atmospheric, but then I was trying to think of why it didn't really work for me in this book, even though it really was atmospheric and did evoke a feeling and a place. And I have to keep coming back to the setting. I feel like had this been set in historical Ireland, maybe there would have been more to tie it to. I don't know. It's obnoxious. I don't want to be the kind of reviewer that's telling the author how they should have written their book because that's this pointless. The book, the book is written. It's not my job. I hate when, when you, when you, as an artist, when you make something and someone's like, if I were you, I would have made it this way. I was like, well, okay, great. But I was thinking about why I liked The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden better, because that's also a book with a really strong atmospheric feeling. It's also slow. Um, I think why I liked The Bear and the Nightingale better was a couple of reasons. First of all, that series, even in that first book, is really this love letter to Russian mythology. And so there really is this deep connection to an actual folklore and history of Russia and things, sort of larger conflicts between the, you know, old believers and old ways and the rise of Christianity tied into kind of a supernatural thing. And here it's like the fairy tale elements. It, it didn't really connect to any real element of the story. It was just, they were just there. Like it was just kind of a feeling. It didn't, it wasn't tethered to anything, if that makes sense. I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. But I think the other reason why I liked The Bear and the Nightingale better than this book was just the, the characters were a lot more vivid for me. But the reason I picked up this book in the first place is because I wanted that dark fairy tale and on that it did deliver. I feel like this would be a good book to read if you just really want that mood or maybe around Halloween. Like this is a short book, it's about 300 pages. I think this would be a fun book to read around Halloween if it's dark and spooky outside and you just want to creep yourself out a little bit. There are a lot of fairy tales kind of interspersed into the story. Some of them the main character is is reading or being told or remembering and it, it does really hit that that mood, that fairy tale, you know, Brothers Grimm, just the this, this story ends with nasty things happening to the children, like that kind of fairy tale. So if you just are really in the mood for that, um, maybe give this book a try. Otherwise, it just, it just didn't have the impact on me that I was looking for. So I didn't really love it, but I'm still, I'm glad that I got a chance to review it. And I hope that this review is helpful in terms of helping you decide if you're interested in reading it or not. If you have read this book or if you're planning to, let me know down in the comments. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.